Hey, uh, today I am talking about Pendleton flannels. Even though we're having a milder winter than usual, still below zero, so having some nice warm flannels are a necessity. Uh, I've, ha I've got a bunch of different brands. I've had a ton over the years that I've sold off, uh, but Pendleton's are definitely a mainstay in my wardrobe that I've worn a lot. Uh, I've got this uh, vintage one here and this one here that's a newer made in Mexico board shirt model. Uh, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about Pendleton, a little bit about these shirts, uh, go over some of the features and uh, the fit. That way you've got some information in case you're buying online. Uh, Pendleton woolen mills have been around forever. It was founded in 1863 in Oregon. They've uh, always been known for producing high quality, durable fabrics like wool, tweed, uh, and, and especially flannel like I'm talking about today. I would say they're most well known for their shirts and their blankets. They've really uh, taken a dive into home decor and, and making other products. But uh, for me, when I think of Pendleton, I'm thinking of you know the wool shirts and the wool blankets. Uh, and one thing I love about companies like Pendleton with a really long history is you can often thrift these items and you get the high quality uh, materials for a really great low price if you can find them secondhand and because they're built to last uh, it's not going to be an issue buying something that's older. This uh, one here is uh, as mentioned a vintage one this is uh, from Made in, made in USA uh, and I got it for 40 bucks uh, really cool I love the elbow patches on it and uh, this newer board shirt here I got for 35 bucks um, you know, it does make it hard to figure out, for me, the value because, uh, you know, at those prices, if you can find them secondhand or thrifted, it's really a no-brainer. They're just worth so much more than that. Um, but would I still buy them brand new? Uh, you know, currently they're 159 US for the board shirt. I'm not sure that I would, um, but it is possible. I, I mean... Right now there are some on sale on the website for $109 and I think if I was in need of another nice flannel I wouldn't hesitate at that price. But you know that said, comparing to other companies, uh, $159 for a high quality wool flannel isn't all that cheap. It could even be considered on the lower side um, You know, if you're comparing to other flannels like Ironheart or Samurai, Flathead. Uh, you know, even the the heavy flannel work shirts from Naked and Famous are like 300 and some Canadian. So, you know, price wise, 159 US for something that's going to keep you warm uh, and have a nice design, nice fit, and a really nice fabric is is actually you know not so bad when you're uh, when you're looking at the other options. Uh, this newer one here, um, you know, part of the the way. If you are comparing it to other prices, one of the reasons is it's just a lighter fabric. It really is, you know, um, nowhere near the the heft and weight of some of those other brands I was mentioning. Uh, and then also, these uh, board shirts are made in Mexico, and the cost of production is going to help keep that cost down a little bit as well. They weren't always made in Mexico. Uh, you know, this maroon vintage one here is made in USA. And the construction is spot on. It's nice and tidy. The stitching is well done. Haven't lost any buttons. And many of these vintage shirts will also have uh, some nylon lining above the yoke and uh, along the trim on the inner button fly. And comparing this to uh, the newer one here that's made in Mexico, I don't see any flaws in this one. It's also really well made. Uh, and I would say they compare equally in quality and construction for sure. Uh, when talking about the fit, my experience with Pendleton's uh, is that they tend to fit a little shorter in the arms and longer in the body. The vintage shirts fit even shorter in the arms, uh, and the newer, but the newer ones I find are just perfect for me. Um, you know, they're a little on the shorter side, but not too short, whereas the vintage ones, uh, you know, I've got a, a friend that's also into vintage Pendleton's, and a lot of the time the sleeves are just too short for him. Um, but I think... When you're looking at shirts from that era, you know, 70s era flannels, I've got a few other brands uh, that are the same. So I think it was just something about the design and fit from that time period where the shorter arms was, uh, was much more common. 
The board shirt has a really nice straight cut. It, uh, it gives the appearance of a slim fit without the feel of a slim fit that uh, might feel a little snug along the rib cage, um, you know, or maybe a little constrained. So I'm a really big fan of this cut. And if you've got a longer torso, uh, like I do, this I think is also a really great option for you. The cut is kind of, um, like I said, straight but slimming. Uh, I think it's a flattering fit, uh, but it does have a nice long torso on it. So it works well uh, if that's your build. Uh, I also like uh, just a little, it's a, just a small detail, but I really like the, the thread button loop for the top button. I think that gives it a nice classic vintage feel to it. Uh, the vintage shirts are uh, definitely not going to have that slimming or straight cut. They're going to be roomy. Uh, they're going to be a little bit on the baggier side, which I think is, is just to be expected when you're um, talking about shirts from that era. So it's not going to be flattering, but at the same time, you know, if, if you're like me and you're trying to hide some little love handles, uh, you know, this is, this is going to do the trick. It's going to be a nice roomy fit that's comfortable uh, and uh, you're not going to be worried about uh, showing off uh, any areas that you, you don't want to. So I find, you know, the, the fit on both, I would say, is comfortable, you know, but, uh, but what about the fabric? Wool is not necessarily known to be the most, uh, the most comfortable or pleasing on the skin. You know, it can be a pretty divisive fabric. People either love it or they hate it. Um, I grew up with wool, you know, f through the winter, wool blankets, shirts, uh, you know, even socks, mittens, slippers were all, you know, usually made out of wool for the winter. So that scratchy feel has a certain comfort for me. Um, Pendleton wool is no different. It's going to be scratchy. They haven't found some way to produce magical wool that feels like, <laughs> like cotton. I, I will say the board shirt definitely has a smoother texture than the vintage wool shirt. Uh, but if, if scratchy fabrics are an issue for your skin, you'll probably want to look for a cotton flannel instead. But if wool isn't an issue for you, these are going to keep you warm. Uh, the fabric is going to withstand all the friction from being worn under your winter coat. Uh, you know, all those wash cycles and all the wear that uh, you're going to put it through while you're out shoveling snow or tobogganing, whatever you're doing out there in the winter. Um, you know, these are just high quality shirts by all standards. You know, they're, they're warm. so. They're going to serve that functional aspect of uh, needing a nice warm shirt through the colder months. Um, but also they're just really well designed, really nice shirts. They're going to look great uh, and they go great with jeans. So they, they check all the boxes for me. So those are uh, just a couple examples of Pendleton wool flannel shirts. Thank you so much for watching.